Hello and welcome to the devotion for Monday, October the 9th, Win with Good. Now, we've been talking about malcontents and the uh, fact that every one of us become malcontented, hopefully over good things, over healthy things to be frustrated with, like lack of discipline, uh, not keeping promises, uh, uh, lying to clients. You know, there are a lot of things that, that we can become uh, discontented with because they're unhealthy. They shouldn't be there. But what we do with that discontent we talked about this morning does matter. I shared with you that a thermometer can tell you everything that's wrong. They can point out all the problems and all those kind of things, but they don't do anything healthy about them. To be malcontent but not be healthy or bringing things to a healthier place is not what God called us to be. He called us to love our enemies and pray for those that despitefully use us. And I love this statement. He goes, overcome evil with good. Win with good. So as we begin to look at malcontents or people that frustrate us or different situations and scenarios, we are called not just to be, as I said Sunday morning, a thermometer to tell what the temperature is in the room. We're to be a thermostat, which tells the temperature in the room, but then does something to make it different, makes it healthy. So we're called to be that in the world. And the first thing that we have to do to get, you know, just back on a level playing field as I shared this morning is we have to, have to stop seeing people who are in our way or malcontented or all those things as an enemy. We've got to begin to reach out and overcome evil with good. Win with the right attitude, with the right spirit, with the right heart. Now, Jesus said in this, he goes, I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is Matthew 5, beginning 44. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For if you love those that love you, what reward would you get? Not only the tax collectors do that. And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? For even the pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect. So we see God going, listen, even if that is an enemy, you're to love them. You're to live in a different place. You're to be a thermostat. You're to see the dysfunctional situation, recognize it for what it is, but do something to make it healthier. Now Paul picks up on this in Romans 12, 17. We read the same thing. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. For if it is possible, as far as it depends on who? On you, on me. As far as it depends on me, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For God said, it's mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, this is the hallmark of of to be truly Christian, to be truly Christian, is to go, there is no circumstance or situation that I cannot bring health and life to it. But to do that, I've got to be healthy myself. We have to recognize that every single one of us may be able to look at someone who's malcontent or you know who's unhealthy or who's dysfunctional, but the second that we begin to judge and to criticize rather than try to make healthy uh, situation, we enter into the disease with them. We may not be uh, discontented with the circumstance or situation, but we're discontented with the person, and that continues to make it unhealthy. God didn't call us just to love good people, not just to work well with honest people, not just to uh, get along with friendly people. No, God said, no matter what this person is, no matter how dysfunctional, no matter what kind of chaos is in there, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you can make a difference. You can bring and be the change. But you can't do it and, and be angry or frustrated or see this person as an enemy. We may see them as someone who's wounded or hurt or broken or angry or bitter. or I, I mean, there may be a, a, whole th a lot of things that are informing that, but we cannot see them as an enemy. We have to be willing to pray, to look for the opportunity, how can I 
enter in and love this person where they are. Not condone what they're doing, but love them where they are. Let them see that I care about them individually, that I care about them personally. As I said uh, Sunday morning, most people don't know, want to know what you know until they know that you care. They don't care what you know until they know that you care. So I am commanded by God, if I claim to be a Christian, if I say I have his heart, that I have to love my enemies. And that's difficult. It's hard, but it's life transforming, and it's good. And when I learn it, when I begin to walk in that, real life change begins to happen. Not only in the other person, it starts in me, and model through my life can birth life change, even in the hardest of hearts. We can overcome evil with good. God has demonstrated it again and again, especially through the work of Jesus. He overcame evil with good. And it's a command. So, you are no longer allowed to see anyone, no matter what their dysfunction, as your enemy. They have to be someone that you are going to have an opportunity to be a a thermostat. Someone that can help change the temperature in the room. Now, whether or not they respond is not your responsibility. God said... In Romans 12, I will hold them accountable. It's not your job. Your job is to be a thermostat and to do whatever you can to respect, to honor, and earn the right to speak, and then to share the truth and let God try to work with that. Let God change their heart. Let God move them. But no matter how it works out, if I have that heart, if I have that intent, if I have that purpose, I will stay healthy, even in an unhealthy situation. So let's pray. Father, this truth, even though it transforms and gives life, is hard. It doesn't make sense in a fallen world. Because in a fallen world, you have enemies, you hate them, you are bitter, you uh, continue to uh, fight against them, war for their destruction. But Father, over and over again, we realize that when we do that, we become as dysfunctional as the other person. You have called us to be salt and light, to change the temperature in a room, to be a thermostat. And Father, to do that, we have to trust you. We have to look for your work, for your empowering, for your strength. But Lord, I know that you can give us the ability, give us the wisdom, give us the uh, discernment of what to do, how to act, to be able to bring health even into unhealthy situations because you have given us your spirit. So, Father, we are asking for your leadership, your direction, your empowering, that this will be a truth that transforms our life. Do it in and through us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, we're going to be looking this whole week at dealing with malcontent. So, it starts off, they can't be an enemy, and you can be an influence. I'll see you tomorrow.